clearly we think that the political solution is the best way forward to de denuclearize uh, the peninsula uh, and to address North Korea's programs. Uh, I have two functions here, as I've said before. One is to ensure that we are in a high state of readiness, prepared for to fight and win tonight, if need be, and I'm confident in that. And, and secondly, to enable our, our diplomats. So I remain hopeful that we could, uh, again, get the process started again and get, remain on the, on, on the diplomatic path. Uh, Korea is one of those places in the world where we've always maintained very high levels of readiness. Uh, and today we have very high levels of readiness. Uh, and the motto for the U.S. Force in, in Korea's fight tonight, uh, we stay shoulder to shoulder with our ROC, our Republic of Korea counterparts militarily. Uh, and there's a close bond also uh, with the military of Japan. So uh, the tripartite uh, alliance, if you will, between Japan, the United States, and, and uh, the Republic of Korea is rock solid. Uh, and, and I think it's prepared to uh, defend uh, the interests of the United States, Japan, and South Korea at a moment's notice. And it has been for quite some time, and it is today. Importantly, the NDAA authorizes the establishment of the United States Space Force as the newest branch of the armed forces. I want to thank the President for his leadership of this historic initiative, which will posture us to effectively defend our national interests in space. Our reliance on spe space-based capabilities has grown dramatically, and today outer space has evolved into a, into a warfighting domain of its own. Maintaining American dominance in that domain is now the mission of the United States Space Force.